major abiotic factors there are four major abiotic abiotic factors which we are going to study they are temperature water light and soil first we shall go with temperature so the temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness of a substance Pro, uh, temperature decreases progressively from equator towards the poles temperature affects the uh, activity of enzymes and other physiological functions of an organisms and very important one is स्टीनोथर्मल एंड यूरी थर्मल ऑर्गेनिजम्स फर्स्ट विशल गोई यूरी थर्मल ऑर्गेनिजम्स द ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच कैन सस्टेन वाइड फ्लक्चुएशन इन टेम्परेचर सच ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर कॉल्ड एज यूरी थर्मल ऑर्गेनिजम्स वाइड फ्लक्चुएशन मीन्स इफ देर इज एनी सडन चेंज इन द टेम्परेचर दैट डजेंट अफेक्ट द फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ दीज ऑर्गेनिजम्स सच ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर कॉल्ड यूरी थर्मल ऑर्गेनिजम्स कैट डॉग टाइगर एंड ऑल्सो ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू वन पर्टिकुलर रेंज ऑफ टेम्परेचर such type of organisms are called as stenothermal organisms example penguin and python next one is the water what is the important solvent why because the most of the biochemical reactions needs water why because almost all the biochemicals get dissolved in the water and this water acts as medium for all these chemical reactions and it is the major content of the protoplasm and it is also one of the raw material for photosynthesis it acts as medium for many biochemical reactions the quality of water plays a very important role like salinity chemical composition ph etc the salt concentration is usually measured in terms of salinity the organisms which can tolerate wide ranges of salinity are called as urihaline organisms and the organisms which are restricted to one particular range of temperature are called as stenohaline organisms light the ultimate source of the light on the earth is again the sun the visible range of electromagnetic spectrum that is around 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer is called photosynthetically active region why because the plants utilize this light visible range of electromagnetic spectrum that is 400 to 700 nanometer for their photosynthetic process only this range of light is required for the photosynthetic process to takes place hence that that range is called as photosynthetically active region plants growing under the shady area are called are called as sheophytes and the plants which are growing under the well lit area are called as heliophytes depending upon the dependence of the plant on the sunlight for the production of flowers is known as photoperiodism next one is the soil soil is the out, it is the outermost layer of the earth formed by the withering of withering of rocks soil consists of 44% of 45% of mineral matter 25% of water 25% of air and small portion of organic matter organic matter is formed by the dead end uh dead organisms plants and organisms which die and they undergo decomposition process and this forms organic matter and the mineral matter is formed by the withering of rocks and also water it is mainly by the rain uh, the water get by the rain the water gets accumulated within the soil and also the air the water which is present within the soil it is of three types one is gravitational water another one is capillary water another one is hygroscopic water when the rain comes the some amount of the water just flows down to the water table such type of water is called as gravitational water and some amount of the water becomes a thin film around which remains as a thin film around the soil particles such type of water is called as hygroscopic water and some amount of the water it is held between the pore spaces of the soil particles such type of water is called as capillary water this is very important because this water can be easily absorbed by the plants through capillary action this is the only water available to the plants and next one is response to abiotic factors always our environmental conditions keeps on changing the organism has to maintain their constant internal environment for ever changing external environment so how they maintain their internal environment through a process called known as homeostasis organism maintain homeostasis by four methods one is regulation conformation migration and suspension first one is regulation here the best example i can give is we the human beings during the summer what happens we outside temperature is more when compared to the inside temperature so the body temperature keeps on increasing but our normal range of temperature is 37 degrees celsius so our body sweats profusely so that the excess of heat gets out and again the normal temperature is maintained but during the winter season what happens outside temperature is low when compared to the inner temperature so what happens is we 
शुअर कंटिन्यूअसली सो दट द हीट इज जनरेटेड विथ इन द बॉडी एंड अगेन द थर्टी सेवन डिग्री सेल्सियस इज मेंटेन्ड दिस organ this process is known as regulation so regulation can be defined as the ability of the organism to maintain the constant internal environment by some physiological means such organisms are called as warm blooded or also called as endotherms next one is conformation the organisms which match their internal environment to the external environment such organisms are called as cold blooded organisms are also called as conformers are also called as ectotherms all invertebrates and amphibians they match their internal environment suppose the temperature is more they increase the temperature if the temperature is less they decrease their body temperature this is called as conformation next one is migration it is a special type of process where the organism in order to escape escape the stressful conditions they migrate from that area this process is known as migration it is a two way movement of the whole population from stressful habitat to the more con- convenient habitat for food and shelter it can be daily periodic or seasonal but the only important thing is it is a two way movement they leave the habitat when the stressful conditions are there and they go elsewhere and again they return back to their original habitat once the favorable conditions arrive this is known as migration and another one is suspension the organisms which cannot regulate organisms which cannot conform organisms which cannot migrate undergo special process known as suspension they suspend their body activities they remain dormant this process is called some uh, this process is called as suspension some lower lower group of organisms completely pause their activities by remaining dormant to just escape the unfavorable conditions it is called as suspension Ex- best example is the bacteria and fungi what the and lower group of plants called as bryophytes and pteridophytes what they do is they form a thick walled spores and remain dormant as soon as the favorable conditions arrive they germinate and give rise to the new plants when comp- uh, th- this is about the plants and next one is animals also suspend their activities they are known as this is known as hibernation and estivation hibernation is also called as winter sleep and estivation is also called as summer sleep in hibernation what happens the organisms try to escape the winter they co- can't tolerate the winter season so they try to remain at one particular space wa- warmer they occupy the warmer region they store all the food material along with them and they remain dormant this process is called as hibernation to escape winter sleep another one is estivation to escape the summer they can't tolerate the high temperature so they remain in one particular cooler area they occupy all the food materials and they rest there they remain dormant such process is called as estivation and some lower group of animals like um, planktons which keep on floating on the waters uh, diatoms namicola what they do is they again form encystment thick wall around their body and they remain dormant this process is called encystment and the and also it is also called as diapause thank you so next we shall go with the adaptations adaptation is any character of an organism which enables it to survive and reproduce in its habitat more efficiently so here are some of the adaptations of the plants first we shall go with xerophyte what are xerophyte xerophytes are the plants which are, which grow in desert conditions where availability of water is very less so they have got special adaptations let's go what all what all adaptations they have got first one is root system is very highly developed why because first of all they are growing in the condition where availability of water is very less even a small drop of water becomes more essential so they absorb water very quickly and hence they have got very well developed root system to minimize the rate of transpiration to minimize the rate of transpiration they have got thick cuticle on the surface of its epidermis so that whenever transpiration takes place the water will not get easily get evaporated and hence thick cuticle protects it and next one is sunken stomata it is a type of special tomato stomata which can be present which can be seen only in the xerophytes where the stomata folds inwards and form a cup like structure whenever the transpiration takes place water gets evaporated and collects in this cup like structure whenever water is needed whenever the plant needs water it is this water is reabsorbed so it doesn't waste the water so this is the sunken stomata next one is here in xerophytic plants leaves are absent and stem takes up the function of leaves that one is called as phylloclade you can see here stem take up takes up the function of leaves and wherever the stomata are there there 
spines are present to minimize the rate of transpiration and also they have exhibit special type of carbon dioxide fixing phenomenon called as cam pathway or corselacean acid metabolism this is about xerophytes next one is hydrophytes what are hydrophytes hydrophytes are the plants which grow in water where the availability of water is very adequate so there the root system is very poorly developed why because there the root is meant only for anchoring why because since the plant present in the water all the absorption of water and gaseous material takes place through the general body surface and roots are meant only for anchoring purpose and next one is they have got special type of parenchyma called as erenchyma where they have got air spaces so this air spaces helps for the, helps the plant to float in water helps in buoyancy usually stomata are absent they have got see here large cavities are present these cavity are filled with air so that it helps in buoyancy and next we shall go with adaptations of halophytes what are the halophytes halophytes are the plants which grow in saline conditions where the salt concentration is more such plants are called as halophytes here what happens is root system is highly developed they have got prop roots and stilt roots marshy area since they grow in marshy area their root system should be very well developed so they have got prop roots and stilt roots for extra support and next they have got a special type of roots known as nematophores nematophores are the roots which grow outwards they come out of the soil they become negatively phototropic and they become positively phototropic and negatively geotropic they come outside the soil surface they pop out like this why because first of all the the place where they are growing there the saline the water is more saline the saline and the plant cannot absorb such type of water very easily so this roots which become positively phototropic they come out they have minute pores on their uh, body so they absorb moisture from the atmosphere this is pro uh, these type of uh, roots are called as nematophores and next one is they have got a special type of uh, seed growing phenomenon called as vv pari vv pari is a condition where whenever the plant produces a flower and flower is converted into a seed when that seed will not immediately fall down that seed is seed grows attached to the mother plant for some some time and again it falls down this is vv pari which is specific to halophytes and next is adaptation in animals so some physiological examples so whenever we grow to the, when we whenever we go to the high altitude area where the atmospheric pressure is very less so what happens one feels uh, sickness causes fast breathing fatigue headache vomiting sensation we all feel these symptoms when we go to the high altitude conditions why because there the availability of oxygen is very less atmospheric oxygen atmospheric pressure is less so whenever we breathe amount of oxygen which is entering into our body is very less so we start to feel fatigue headache we feel like vomiting and all so we take few Mm, we take few minutes to adjust to that situation after adjusting to that situation then we don't feel such symptoms what happens after adjusting is increasing the number of blood cells where our body start to produce more number of blood cells and also it there is a decrease in the affinity of hemoglobin with oxygen and also there is increase in breathing rate and next one is allen's rule where it is a very important point what is allen's rule the organisms which are growing in hotter area they have long limbs long limbs long neck and ears whereas the organisms which are growing in cold colder area they have got very short limbs short ear short snout why because since they grow in since they live in very cold conditions and their body temperature has to be always maintained to the normal temperature so in order to shiver they shiver and the body temperature is increased whenever the body parts are small that energy required to maintain the temperature is very less so their body parts are very short whereas the organisms which are growing in uh, growing in 
hotter areas they have got long body parts why because they have to maintain their internal temperature by sweating whenever the, the sweating takes place excess of body heat is given out so that long body parts if the long body parts are there more number of heat is given out at a very short period of time so they have large body parts they mm, whereas the pole uh, the organisms growing in colder area have got small body parts thank you